petitions there are not, none of those. So we move straight on to item seven. Where you've got to put the minutes to a vote. I knew that. That's just after we put the minutes to a vote. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is everyone in favour of the minutes that Sam moved and Pauline seconded? Everyone in favour of those? Aye. Say aye. aye. Against? Carried. Thank you. Right, so now we're moving. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> now we're moving down to item seven, Heathcote Expressway, Major Cycle Road. And uh, Lynette's going to come up and give us a wee chit-chat about that. Thank you, Lynette. Kia ora Um... I'd like to introduce Donald Hanrahan. He's the project manager for these, this project and this report and the next report. So um, I think we'll take the report as read, unless you've got a brief intro that you want to do. Um, this is this one is um, the Cumnor Terrace one way. Yeah. yeah. So look, we went out to consult on Cumnor Terrace whether to um, keep it as two way or make it one way advantage of one way was that they kept the footpath on the other side of the road um, so recommendations are we keep it two way um, we're also looking to go out and consult on making it 40k in the area um, has significant safety improvements if we make it 40k and there was quite a bit of support from the, the public when we were consulting on it um, so, yeah is there any questions Pauline? Oh, thank you. I'm not sure if it's in the report. I might have missed it. But why would we not want to go to 30k? Um, 30k is generally kept for more urban environments, more kind of city centre where you have a lot of kind of uh, people yeah. movements. It's there's, not really suitable for 30k in an industrial area. And there's actually a, in the in the transport report, we've got a... Um, article about speed limits and Stephen's here so maybe we talk about the advantages and disadvantages of 30 or 40 in the places that we can do them in that that item if that's all right with the council yeah. and the chair mm -hmm. so so it was considered but yeah. discounted as yeah. not appropriate for the area yeah yep. thank you up sarah <clears throat> thank you i just want to uh, just have a quick check on truscott's road actually just just making sure that um because the design's all great and approved already Yep. Though the end bit has changed to go across yep. Martindale's. Um, because it's, it's greenway, and in some greenways we don't resurface the road. So some of the stuff on Rapanui Shag Rock, it's pretty grotty road condition still, even though it's neighbourhood greenway. Truscott's road is in really poor condition. Yep. Do you know if it's going to be resurfaced? Um, as part of our job, we're incorporating some through waters work, which means there's a new water main going down there as well. So yes, it will be. Oh, excellent. So we're incorporating yeah. that, so it'll all be dug up as part of that. So. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Um, and the potential gateway treatment on um, the very bottom of Station Road yeah. at, at the start of the cycleway, I'm kind of hoping that that will become a bit of a trend and it looks like there's some sort of cycleway signage planned. Is that the type of thing that might go in there? Yeah. That we I saw the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. that's something we'll look at. That's great, thank you. Anybody else with any questions? Yanni. Thank you. Um, I'm just trying to understand how we got to so far along this process in terms of design without talking to the fire service to inform what we were putting out. Because I, I think the really concerning thing in this report is the fire service saying that they had serious concerns about the design and access for emergency services. <coughs> so I'm just trying to understand why that's not picked up before we put this out for consultation. Um, we consult with them. Their comments on their concerns were related to making Cumnor Terrace one way and the access problems they'd have with it being one way. They've no problem with the actual cycleway or the two, when it was first proposed as a two-way so two way road down Cumnor Terrace. Sorry, but, but when we before we went out with the one-way option, yep. have we not had feedback from the fire service that it wasn't? A, a good design for them for emergency services. Like, why doesn't that get picked up in the in the redesign for the one way? So, at the time that the um, scheme was uh, approved in twenty seventeen, yeah, yeah, the donor wasn't actually here then. So that this is me dredging up the memory bank. So I apologise. 
at the time that was approved, there was feedback from the community that they wanted to retain the footpath on the business side of the road. The only way that we could make that design happen was to incorporate a one-way system and the committee at the time asked us to go out and consult on the one on 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 the possibility of a one way right. we have done that and talked to the fire service along the way so one of the objectives is the fire service and saying that the, the one way system isn't ideal for them for access so that's part of the process yeah and just um I just wonder whether in our design um, process we need to just really have the emergency services right at the start of the process. We do. Yeah, we we did do. In the original we consultation. In we do and we did on this. Right. And they knew that the, the consultation was coming out to go to a one way and we knew that there was a level that they were uncomfortable with. Right, okay. Just two other questions I had, um, and I just want to thank staff for sending out the letter to the submitters again. Obviously, this project has been delayed quite a few times through the process with COVID. Um, so, you know, thank you for making people aware. Um, just was really interested in um, if you could just give us a high-level summary of what the ecological assessment you've done. Obviously, this has been close to the river. Yeah. Um, and then the second question um, sort of related to that is around the tree removals um, and how that fits with our new tree policy. What's the value of the trees that are being removed and how will that be compensated in terms of any um, planting or, you know, did we think about something different given that we yep. adopted the tree policy between when this went out for consultation and when it's come back to us? Thank you. So around the ecology, we've had the City Council um, herpetologists go out and do a lizard survey and found lizards in the area and we've got our dock permits in place for capture and relocation of lizards. We've had a ecologist, external ecologist look at the river and we've also had our, inter so they were looking more at fish and the river life and we've also been involving um, Andrew Crossland, the council ecologist with bird life and uh, lighting through the area. So they've all been involved in it from the start and the roots, and they've also all been heavily involved with the planting we're doing to make sure it provides lizard habitats and suitable river habitats. Um, regarding the tree removal, we do have to remove a couple of big trees, um, and it, we have permission to remove two of them. One of those has already been removed, um, I presume by parks, because it is unsafe. We've had a recent Ar Ar Arborist report back which says because one of them has been removed and we're removing the other, the likelihood is that all, all of them will have to be removed. Um, but we are doing significant planting down there. Um, along the river we're doing some significant planting down, infill planting on the area where we were looking to potentially put it one way. So that's about 600 metres of significant planting down there. And also we're doing about roughly I think it's up over 2,000 square meters of planting on bare land at the moment just creating lizard habitat so it'll be a mixture of trees and other things so even though this was approved well before the um, new council tree policy I haven't got the numbers in front of me but we do significantly plant significantly more trees than we remove um, well above what the new tree policy asks for right but, it, but it'll take quite a few years to offset the carbon loss from these mature trees. Yeah, it, it will. But we are planting. I'm, yeah, I, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but it is significantly more than a two for one. And we are planting natives. Those trees aren't natives. Um, and we're also um, creating, planting lizard habitat and lizard friendly uh, okay. trees and plants. All good, Yanni? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'd just like to welcome Leanne, who's joined us on Zoom. Good morning. This, we're up to item seven, Leanne. Right. Uh, I've, I've got any other questions? I've got a couple for Lynette. No, no. Lynette, with the um, road more or less getting shifted sideways by a metre and a half, perhaps, or a metre, are we going to reconstruct the whole road? When we th I'm just talking the one-way... The, the, the one the Cabinet Terrace bit? Um, Which is staying two-way. 
So we're keeping we're it two-way. We're proposing to keep it two-way. We will be reconstructing a significant portion of it because we have to remove the footpath on the other side, but it won't be a full reconstruction. Um, but we are talking to the business, like we will do as much as we can we need to. Yeah, okay. And are we thinking of, because um, the river does tend to flood that a little bit when it's extremely high tide, if we did reconstruct the road, because we're, we're practically doing both sides of it, and the bit of the middle would be a bit knackered, should we look at raising maybe the, the two curbs up or something, 100 mil, and redoing the road because then it won't be impacted by flooding so much in the future while we've got the opportunity? Yeah, we, we wouldn't get consent. We're not planning on doing that, and we wouldn't get consent for raising the road because you just push the flooding issues into other areas and potentially private property. Okay, no, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, what else we got? I think um, it, it's good to, to note that at all the submissions that came through for one way versus two way, 104 people voted to uh, submitted that they'd like to keep it as two way, and 40 said one way was okay. Um, we've listened to the people that have um, submitted to us, and we're keeping it two way. It will be slightly narrower, but that's not the end of the world. And the, the trucks, or the, there is a lot of trucks down there because it's a very busy area, but it's important that people can get both ways. And I, I read the report that especially resource recycling need to have trucks arriving at their Weybridge pointing in the right direction, otherwise it's it's actually a bloody nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think we've, it, the, the common sense um, result has, has come here. So I'm happy to move this if anyone has got any in serious seconding. I was hoping that Yep, we can. Yes, yes, yes. So we're going to need discussion. All those in favour? Aye. Right. Yes. Gary, thank you. So which ones are we doing here? Yes, Tim. While, while everyone's here, I just wanted to do a quick thank you to the next team, Steve and Tony. Just we had a, um, a car go through a barrier at the bottom of Dice Pass Road the other week mm. and into people's homes, and they were really nervous. Steve and Tony got onto it and they put the, the barrier as it was back really quickly and the residents are so thankful for that, how quickly it got, so thank you. And they are working on an engineering solution to strengthen it. So I, on behalf of the community board, I just thought to thank the team while we're live streaming and so cheers. Thank you very much. Okay, everybody, everybody happy, thank you Andrew, see you later. Um, we're on to item eight.